Hi everyone, welcome to another Hatton's Model Railways live stream and today we've got a bit of a beginner skills cast for you. We're looking at some of the basic detailing we can do to enhance the wagons and vehicles that form part of our goods or freight trains. These are going to be some quick fire tips that are really easy to implement on your models. We don't need a huge amount of tools or expertise for a lot of the things we will be doing today. So I'll give you a bit of a quick fire round on a lot of things you can do. If there's anything you'd like to learn a little bit more on, please let us know in the chat or if you're watching a little later on, feel free to add your comment to the video or get in touch with our customer experience team who are happy to help. So I've got a range of models here, ranging from the really super detailed latest releases such as Hornby's 20 ton brake van, right through to some of the earlier models which have the larger couplings, plastic wheels, not quite as much detail but we can still do a huge amount to these older models to really bring them up to the current standards. And of course, it's great fun to do too. So we'll be doing a little bit of that today and I'll be showing you some of those skills as we go. And one of the first I want to cover today is changing the wheels on your wagons. A lot of them are built with plastic wheels, especially the older models that we see out there. And although they are very reliable, just get that camera going in HD, there we go. You can see there, they just don't quite have the same amount of detail as you would expect with some of the metal wheels on certain locomotives. They look good, but they don't look great, really. And these can come on some of the different railroad models out there and, of course, on older vehicles too. If I bring over, I'll try and find a spoked wagon. There we go. You can see on this Backman Conflat, the wheels there, a lot more detailed and the metal wheels do add the tiniest bit of weight to, to improve some of the running on your model. So if you can do, it really is worth switching over to some of the higher quality wheels. So to do that, I'll show you over on the camera. I've got some replacement wheel sets here now from a, a metal set of wheels, which you can pick up from a number of different suppliers. We have several available on our website from Hornby at the moment. Now, they do come in a number of different sizes, which are mentioned on our website. The dimensions listed are actually the diameter of the wheels themselves. So if you're not too sure which ones you need, check your wheels on your current model with a small ruler or a steel rule and check the dimensions of the diameter of the wheels and then compare that with the listings on our website and you will get the correct wheels for your model. So heading back over, Let's take a closer look at this particular model that we've got here. So I've got one of the older wagons from a few years ago now. They are harder and harder to come by with these plastic wheels, but you may have some older wagons in your collection there, which do have these fitted. So you can see how they have little axles that they fit into there. And you can see the difference between the original plastic wheel in this hand and the replacement metal wheel that I've got there in the next hand over. So what we're doing is the pinpoint of the axle, we're gonna slide that into the axle box. We do need to apprise the model apart slightly, so do be gentle when you are doing this. Just line that up with the first axle on one side, make sure that sits in securely. It's a little harder to do when you're doing it live, as I'm sure you can imagine. And then just splitting that aside, we'll make sure that goes in there is wanting to be a little awkward so just splitting the model apart there unfortunately it is wanting to try its best there to mess me around unfortunately i do apologize just checking that yeah, unfortunately i'm sorry guys i know it's live but it is wanting to play around it is a different size axle that i've got here so that is something unintentional bit of advice but certainly a bit of an important advice too you can see that the length of the axles there are actually different too so that is something very important to check when you are checking the wheels it's so important that i didn't check it before we went on earth so i do apologize about that certainly do as i say not as i do on this one but you can see that once the metal wheels are replaced, you can see the quality difference in those particular sets. And just bringing on our conflat there again, once they are installed, you can see the higher quality of the finish. And also, as said, it does add a very small bit of weight 
And of course, in real life, wheels are quite shiny too compared to the plastic finish there. So sorry, I'm not able to get one into our railroad wagon today. That shows you the exact importance of making sure you've checked and got the right wheels for your wagons there. But once you do get them in, they are fantastic to look at in there. But a lot of models these days are coming through with these wheels already instated. So let's have a bit of a look at adding some of the actual details to our wagons. Now, a lot of the more modern wagons, and we will be coming back to our classic railroad wagon in one second, do have a huge amount of detail on them now, including underframe detail and separate parts. But there's still some great opportunities to add further items to this too. I have here one of Backman's Conflat wagons and a Conflat load, which would be carried throughout the UK from the 1950s right through to around the early 1980s. So what we're going to do there is permanently attach this. If you've watched a few of our videos already, you'll be quite familiar with the process here. So I'll put that in our tray. It's really good to have something like this to work on, whether it's a tray or whether it's some foam, especially if you are working on wagons because they do tend to roll around a little bit too out there. So make sure you've got something firm to secure them when you are doing some precision modeling such as this. So let's head over to our tray there. So I'm sure most of you now know my top tips for gluing, but I'll make sure I mention them again. So I have a very small amount of super glue and a scrap piece of plastic card here. And never apply the glue directly from the tube onto the model. I always get a little cocktail stick, as you can see. And that then controls the amount of glue that will be going on the model. I've made sure both the model and the bottom of the conflat are clean. And then just put in a small amount of glue there. Less is more with this, making sure that it won't bleed through when we stick it down, but also that there is enough there to secure the connection. If you want a fully secure connection, if you really want to make sure it stays down, you can glue every single part of the bottom of the model. But generally, if you've got a flat surface to flat surface, you'll find that covering around half, as I've done here, and then just some little joins in the middle, will see you okay and securely just making sure it's quite flat so that we're not going to have any bleed through there and then just going to put that on thanks real sponge i'm doing really well this morning actually apart from my little wagon mishap but otherwise i'm i'm doing absolutely great and hopefully a little better once we've got this wagon on this conflat on here so pushing down getting some real firm firmness there giving it around 10 seconds or so to join on, just making sure we've got the pressure against the wagon floor and the actual conflat load too, putting that in place. And you can get a different variety of these. This tip is really great if you are having container wagons with a permanent load on them, although a lot of the wagons are having removable loads out there too. A wagon such as this, you may want to put something on more permanently if it's part of a passing goods train on your layout. And this can be used from wagons such as this in the steam era, right through to some of the modern container wagons out there with intermodal 40 and 45 foot containers, such as our own Hatton's Originals FEA wagons or the Dapol and Backman container wagons too. So that should have dried now. That should have settled down quite nicely. We'll just give it a bit of a, a drop test to make sure. And you can see that that is firmly secure there and our wagon is ready to go back onto the layout there now a really small but essential part of detail just adding a little bit of customization to this particular vehicle as you've mentioned there too you can use other methods of attaching you can use tacky wax or gray tack but if you're making a permanent connection i really would recommend using something like super glue or in some cases PVA too, but certainly less is more with the technique that we've just shown you there. So let's head back to our railroad wagon. Let's have a look at the underframe of this. And you will see here, if I bring that over to the main camera for you, on some of these older vehicles, there really isn't much going on on these particular wagons. You can see that there's a huge amount of space under the sole bar and under the underframe there. Whereas if we get a different vehicle, look at this Hornby horse box, 
you can see we've got the vacuum brake cylinder there and a lot of underframe piping and other details there too. It is something that you think you may not see when it's underneath the wagon, but it really does surprisingly show up, especially when you're looking at it from certain angles. So it is something that's great to add. Plus, if you know it's there half the time, it's still really good to have on some of your models too. So from a spur wagon kit I had lying around, I have some underframe details here. I believe this is from a Parkside kit that I just had on the side of my workbench. And you can see some of the items here, including the vacuum brake cylinder and other items that we can add to the bottom of our wagon. If you want to check out some more details on how to take these apart and put them together, check out our building plastic kits video on the channel. But for today, I'll just add the vacuum brake cylinder to the bottom of the wagon there to show you how easy it is to add some of these minor details. So I'll just chop that away. And usually I would just clean up the little bit of flash there, but as we're doing this quickly, I'll get it straight on the particular wagon. Pulling our glue back into shop. And again, just a little bit on the end of the cocktail stick there. And either if you feel pretty safe, you can do this with your fingers. If you're not, you can always have a pair of tweezers to hand too, especially when you're working with something this small. Again, just covering about half of the bottom of the vacuum cylinder. I'm going to look at our horse box for inspiration, although do have a look at the particular models and vehicles you are replicating to see if they do have similar equipment such as this and indeed where it is located. The vacuum brake cylinder there being in about the middle of the wagon, so we'll try and replicate that as best we can on our Hornby wagon here too. So find an appropriate spot, press that down, and again, just giving that a few seconds so it attaches and may need a little bit more glue on that there. I think I will do, actually. I think while I was talking, the glue dried. So that's one thing to bear in mind with the super glue is it can dry quite quickly, so just bear that in mind. You can also put a bit on the surface you're joining it to, too, to help that bond. Now we've got a little bit more on there. We'll get that on straight away. So the bond takes. Just putting a little bit of pressure on both the bottom of the wagon and the actual part we're fitting on there too. This will be the first part of many we'd be putting on for the vacuum brake fittings on this wagon, including some of the piping on the end of the wagon there too. But for now and today, I'll just show you this one particular piece going on. You can see that there now, the vacuum brake cylinder. I'll just bring that a little closer and move my glue out of the way. You can see there now, we've just started putting some details on and you'll certainly see that through the open-sided underframe of this particular vehicle. Couple of golden rules when you are adding some parts like this, make sure they don't interfere with any of the wheel sets or come very close to the axles. And of course, do have a look at some prototype images too for different items that are out there and look at the detailed wagons in your fleet for more inspiration too. So I'll leave that over there to dry. We can continue then with the various different parts that we have here. You can pick these up as part of plastic kits or you can build the full plastic kits themselves into your own wagons from scratch. So even with some of the most detailed models that we see here, in the case of our brake vans, this is the Oxford Rail six-wheel brake van, and this is the Hornby 20-ton brake van. Although they already come with a huge amount of detail, there's some great opportunities to add even further items to this. If we look at our brake van here, I've already taken the wheels off this, so we can see the huge amount of underframe detail that we have there. We've also got separately fitted handrails, full NEM couplings and buffers, separate lamp irons, and even equipment inside the guards area there too. If you wanted to weather this, you certainly can do, and weathering is something we're going to touch on on a future video. But for today, I'm going to look at something a little bit simpler than that. I'm going to look at changing the couplings over. Although wagons are great to have for couplings, you can sometimes add some of these super detail couplings too. These are available from Hornby as the R7200. 
They are cosmetic, but you can see here they're the fully authentic screw link type used on wagons from the early 20th century right through to the current day. And if you're not too fussed about shunting your trains, if you do want an end of a rake with some really nice fittings on it, you can swap out for these couplings that you see here. Some wagons do have them fitted as part of their detail pack. But in this case, I'll just show you how to take these out. So it's just sticking a screwdriver just slightly under the NEM pocket there, making sure you drive that right to the back so you don't damage the pocket, lifting that loosely away. And you'll see there that we've now cleared the space. We can take this bar out. We'd have to drill that out. And then once that's drilled out, we can put in the replacement coupling that we've just seen. This is something that's different on every single model you'll find. So you may need to do some looking at your particular models to see some of the expertise there. But you can see already we've cleared the space now here for the fully cosmetic couplings to be added. Although it would need a little bit of work drilling out the buffer beam and inserting those in. You can do that with a small drill bit or pin vise and removing the current coupling that's there. If you are looking at a vehicle that sits permanently at the end of a rake, that is something you can enhance them with. Some other opportunities there for brake vans are, of course, guards in the brake vans too. You can pick these up in various different designs. We have done some videos on fitting figures to different sorts of vehicles and exactly the same techniques can be used here too. You'll find a certain ways to take the bodies off these particular vehicles and instructions will be included with most. But in a lot of cases, you may find that you have to have a bit of a look and figure out how the models come apart. If you're not too sure and there's a certain brake van you do want to fit some detail into, get in touch with our team and we'll be more than happy to give you some advice on that. One final thing for detailing brake vans is, of course, lamps. And again, lamp codes is something we're going to cover in a future video. So do keep an eye on our channel for exactly how and where you fit these two brake vans. These designated different types of freight and different types of services running along. But you can see there the really simple way of starting with this is hanging one white tail lamp on the rear of your brake van. Heading back over to our Hornby brake van for a second, you'll see that this model is absolutely ready for this with a lamp bracket on the end of it there and also two further lamp brackets if you wish to add additional lamps to the side of this particular vehicle. These would then be attached with either cosmetic lamps that you can pick up in a variety of scales. We do have the Backman lamps available now, which are cosmetic, and there's also similar from Springside models, which you can pick up from various retailers online. You can get fully working lamps too from DCC Concepts, which we do have in stock right now, although they need a little bit more work to get to work because you have to power them from the track or a suitable battery within the inside of your model. Working lamps will be something we'll cover in a future video, including brake van lamps, as we've said. So if that's something you'd like to learn a little bit more about, stay tuned for that particular video on our channel. But it really is something that's really quite easy to do is adding a little bit of detail to your vehicles. You can see here that we've already added a full load to our Conflat wagon. This has had a few minutes to dry now and has absolutely no issues staying there on any particular layout. There's a whole variety of further things we can do too. We've already started to detail the underframe of our railroad wagon. We had a little bit of an unsuccessful attempt at replacing the metal wheels there, but it really is a case of just clipping those out and clipping them back in. As you saw, I'll just put the plastic ones back in so I can demonstrate that to you. Really is just a case of stretching the chassis slightly with your hands. So do be careful when you are doing it. And just making sure that axle sits back in the axle box there. It's really not wanting to do this for me today, is it? It's a little bit tricky, unfortunately. No, I think I think I've found my nemesis with this particular wagon today. It certainly isn't wanting to play ball when it comes to being live on the stream. So I promise you it's as easy as it looks, even though I'm certainly not making it look that easy today. We'll try it here with our Oxford Rail brake van instead. Hopefully this wants to play with me. I'm playing with fire a little bit here now, doing this a 
live, but there we go. It's really as simple as that. Not as simple as with the other wagon, as simple as this that you can see here for replacing some of those wheels and being able to put details on your chassis too. So have a look at some prototype photos for inspiration and the different bits that you see out there too. There's some fantastic photos online such as this showing not only some locomotive details, but the all important details on the brake van and the shunter's wagon there too, including some of the lamps and the, of course, the guard in the wagon there too. That'd be a great opportunity for upgrading our Oxford Rail brake van that we have on our workbench at the moment. Other things you can do, you can fit wagon loads to your wagons, really easy to do again. And although we've not covered it in today's video, we have a wide range of these available and we have done numerous videos on our channel demonstrating the hows, whys and whats of fitting these in. So I'll put a link in the description there for you if you want to head over to that one for a closer look. This is just a small amount of things you can do to your wagons though. You can add extra piping, extra underframe detail as we already started on with our railroad wagon. You can upgrade the couplings, you can change the couplings, you can add detail, change numbers, change liveries, you name it. You've got a huge amount of creativity with these vehicles in any scale. So if there's something I've not covered today that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, please do leave a note in the comments and we'll certainly consider it for a future video too. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about enhancing some of the models, maybe that you've picked up as a Christmas present or maybe that you've had for a few years and you do want to bring them up to the quality of the newer wagons you are buying as part of your collection. Don't forget to subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube page too. And thank you very much to John for doing so. Follow John's inspiration there, guys, and head over and click the subscribe and like button for more different videos such as this, such as skills cast sessions, and of course, all the latest model railway news too. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.